Hi, this is the first video in our proof writing portion of the series, uh, the largest portion of the series, in fact. And we're going to start with um, understanding what a proof is. But before that, we need to talk about what is a mathematical statement. A mathematical statement is a sentence which can be labeled as true or false. A proof is a convincing argument that justifies the truth of a mathematical statement. If a mathematical statement is true, then we say that the truth value of the statement is true. Na uh, similarly, when um, the mathematical statement is false, then we say that the truth value is also false. Let's take a look at some examples. Some examples of mathematical statements. There are infinitely many prime numbers. This is a true statement, famously proven by Euclid. Um, but there are other ways to prove uh, this statement. Um, if you're interested, there's a nice book called Proofs from the Book by Martin Eichner and Gunther Ziegler. Um, and they talk about six proofs of the infinity of primes, and they are all very interesting. Um, one of those uh, includes the original proof by Euclid. Okay, so, uh, second statement, there is no largest natural number. This is also a true statement. Okay, example number three is not really a mathematical example, but it is also uh, an example of or an instance of mathematical statement. All cats are black. This is a false statement. Um, well, there are cats with gray color or white, so this is not true that uh, all cats are black. But it has a truth value, this statement. Hence, it's a mathematical statement. Um, it's a nice exercise for you to maybe think about uh, some uh, sentences in, uh, in, in English um, that maybe has truth value or not. Okay, last example here. Uh, if m and n are even numbers, then their sum, m plus n, is also even. Uh, this is also a true statement. Okay, so uh, what is an example of a non-mathematical uh, statement? Um, uh, don't open the door is an example of a non-mathematical statement. There's no uh, truth value in there. In this final example, uh, there are some keywords here. Um, if, then, and and. These are called connectives. Um, and using connectives, you can uh, join uh, simple statements and make a larger statement, which sometimes is referred to as composite statements. We will go through um, all these connectives, but before that, we're going to talk about the notion of negation. Let P be a mathematical statement. The negation of P is another mathematical statement, which has the opposite truth value to that of p. So for instance, when p is true, then negation of p is false. When p is false, the negation of p is true. Uh, the notation for negation of p, you can simply write it as not p, or use the negation symbol. Another negation symbol, uh, some people also use, um, use tilde. Okay. Uh, it, in most cases, I will use uh, not p, or I will use this uh, more common notation of the negation symbol. A very important object in uh, logic is the truth table. The idea for a truth table is basically summarizing all possibilities for uh, the truth or for falsity of a statement. For instance, the truth table for negation is fairly simple. You have a um, statement P, and the negation is not P. There are two possibilities for P. P can be true or false. And as we mentioned, negation has opposite truth value to that of P. So when P is true, not P is false. And when P is false, not P is true. So this is the truth table for negation. Okay, let's take a look at an example. My statement P is 3 is an odd number. This is a true statement. And what about statement not P? Well, 
if we simply put the word not in front of uh, this sentence, so not three is an odd number, it's meaningless, isn't it? This, uh, well, maybe meaningless is not the correct word here, but what I'm trying to say is that it's not particularly useful expression. So sometimes we have to uh, write it in such a way that um, the meaning uh, is expressed clearly, right? Okay, so the better way of writing not P is the following. Three is not an odd number. Or you can also write it, three is an even number. Because we know that a number that is not odd must be even. Okay, so sometimes you can simply just put a not, or if you know more about the property, you can also re-express that uh, statement into a more useful form. Okay, now let's take a look at um, the statement Q. This is a statement that we saw already earlier. All cats are black. Which we know is a false statement. Now, um, it is not true that the negation of the statement is the following. All cats um, are not black. This is not the correct negation. The meaning of all cats are not black is not the same with the meaning of not all cats are black, right? When we negate uh, the sentence, uh, the statement, all cats are black, what do we mean by that? We mean that there's at least uh, one cat or there are some cats um, that is of a different color, let's say gray, right? So um, the correct way to negate uh, Q is the following. There exists a cat that is not black. So what I just wrote and what I wrote in red ink, they don't have the same meaning, right? So we will talk a little more about how to negate uh, sentences or st statements rather, of the following form. So it, this, uh, this keyword here, all, right, is uh, something in mathematics that we call quantifier. Uh, there exists is also an instance of quantifier. And in a the, in the later video, we will talk about um, how to negate statements that contain quantifiers like this. So for now, let's put a pin on it and uh, let's move on with our uh, content on logic. Uh, I've mentioned this earlier, uh, that you can combine statements together uh, with a connective. The first connective that we want to look at is and. Suppose you have two statements, P and Q. The statement P and Q, this is the notation, is true, provided both P and Q are true and false otherwise. This fact is actually easier to, um, to understand if you write the truth table. So what uh, are the possibilities for, uh, truth possibilities for P and Q? And how do we look at the truth value for P and Q? Okay, so there are four, possibilities, four, four possible combinations, right, of uh, truth values for P and Q together. It can be that P is true and Q is true. It can be that P is true, Q is false, or P is false, Q is true. And finally, P is false and Q is false. And the meaning of uh, P and Q is that it's true provided both P and Q are true and false otherwise. So the only uh, possibility or the only case where it is true for P and Q is when both P and Q are true, which is line one. So this is true and the rest is false. Okay, the second connective here is or. Again, you have two statements P and Q. The statement P or Q denoted by this is true provided at least one of P and Q is true and false otherwise. So again, let's look at it with a truth table so that we can clearly see uh, the meaning of P or Q. So again, there are four possible combinations of truth and uh, truth values of, of uh, P and Q combined. 
uh, like before, true, 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 false, fa false, true, and false, false. Okay, so again, let's read it together, provided at least one of P and Q is true. So if we see uh, at any line, one of P and Q is true, then P or Q is true. So it's true for the first line, both are true. It's true for the second line, because P is true. It's true for the, for the third line, because Q is true, and false for the bottom line. Okay, so uh, here I would like to give a warning. The mathematical or the logical or here is inclusive or. Okay, what does it mean? In our day-to-day -day life, when we use or, in most cases, we use the or exclusively. For instance, you tell somebody you can have ice cream or chocolate, it is understood that you can have only ice cream or only chocolate, but not both. But this inclusive or, sometimes uh, in mathematics, we don't say inclusive, we simply just say or, the truth value for P or Q, so when both of them are true, P or Q is also true. So in this instance, when somebody say uh, you can have ice cream or chocolate, if you interpret that or as an inclusive or, you have the option to have both. Um, not the case in, in our day-to-day -day life. There is actually a uh, notion of exclusive or, which is how we use it on day-to-day -day life. Uh, let me actually not write it like that. I'll just uh, add another column on my uh, truth table. So exclusive or, this is typically uh, how the notation uh, looks like. I'm just going to write it here. This is exclusive or. Okay, for exclusive or, uh, it is only true when um, only one of uh, P or Q is true. So it goes false, true, true, false. So just be careful uh, with uh, inclusive or, exclusive or. Uh, in, in mathematics, sometimes we also use exclusive or, and uh, rather than saying P or Q, typically we say either P or Q to um, denote exclusive or. Um, for those of you that um, have done programming, maybe you, would, you are um, familiar with uh, XOR or XOR. <laughs> this actually is the shorthand for exclusive or. Okay, it is uh, very important in mathematics to know when two statements are equivalent or not. Uh, the meaning of uh, equivalence of two statements is the following, uh, if they have the same logical content. Okay, so the first uh, one that I want to show is that P and not not P are equivalent. This is a rather simple example. And how do we show uh, this equivalence? Well, you can use the truth table. We already know earlier the truth table for P and not P. When P is true, not P is false. When P is false, not P is true. What about not not P? Well, we simply negate not P. So false here, therefore not not P is true. And when not P is true, not not P is false. So as you can see here, the logical content for P and not not P are exactly the same, meaning that uh, the two statements are equivalent. Okay, so this uh, fact that P and not not P are equivalent, uh, you can interpret this as um, uh, double negative make a positive, right? Um, in some languages, this is not true. Um, sometimes there's no double negative in a certain language and in which the second one uh, actually emphasized the first. Um, Famously, you, the song, We Don't Need No Education, is not saying that um, you need education, but the meaning uh, there is actually to emphasize um, the, the first negative. Uh, but in mathematics, this is not the case. Uh, double negative uh, makes a positive, so double negation um, gives you your original statement back. Now that we know how to show that two statements are equivalent, let's take a look at these two uh, equivalents that we have here. And uh, these are known as the De Morgan's Law. There's also De Morgan's Law for sets look uh, rather similar. 
um, they're essentially the same uh, in some sense. Uh, the first statement is telling you that how to negate a statement with and. Uh, the second line has a nice symmetry to the first one, is showing you how to negate a statement with or. Okay, uh, I actually uh, typically don't like to use a uh, symbol, but in this instance, using the symbol is actually quite nice. Um, so not P and Q is logically equivalent to uh, not P or not Q. I sometimes just put brackets just, uh, just, to, just to be safe. <laughs> so it seems that uh, uh, it, it, has, it has a quite, quite a nice, uh, ni nice property here, right? as if like when you move the negation symbol in, it attaches itself to uh, P, that one, it makes um, N flip into an OR, and then the uh, negation symbol attach itself to um, not Q. And this works uh, the same way with negating OR. Negate P or Q, you get not P and not Q. The OR has changed to an N, and this is what we get. Okay. Um, but how do you know that they're actually logically equivalent? Well, you can use the truth table. So I am going to demonstrate for the second one, and you can do the first one yourself. Okay, so we need P, Q, P or Q, not P or Q, and then we need not P, not Q, not P and not Q. Okay, these are the ones that we need. And we want to show that the logical content of that column and that column is the same. Okay, so like before, we have true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false, and P or Q is true, 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 false, right? Uh, not P or Q, well, simple, just negate uh, the content in the previous column. So we have false, 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 true. Uh, not P, so we negate this column, the content of that column. So we have false, false, true, true. And then we negate this column. We have false, true, false, true. And now we join this and that with connective N. False and false is false. False and true is false. True and false is false. True and true is true. So as you can see, the logical content of that column is the same with the logical content of that column. Therefore, they are logically equivalent. Uh, you can do the same for the first one. It's very similar. Um, but if this is the first time you're seeing such a content, maybe you should uh, try and uh, do that exercise. Okay, so let me stop here. And then in the next video, I will talk about implications. Thanks for listening.